See this Jeep right here? It has been the bane of my existence. I've never used that term ever in my life. It has hopefully not spoiled friendships. It has ruined customer relationships. It has been an absolute nightmare headache and like probably a learning lesson for you guys if you saw my first video into the behind the scenes of owning a car dealership, which is not always easy. Yeah, I have a Corvette right there and a Camaro and a Viper and some cool stuff like that makes me enjoy this job. But to be honest with you, the minivan is probably gonna make us more money than the Corvette and that's not fun. And it has 160,000 miles and it's gonna be good for somebody, but it's a used car with 150,000 miles or whatever it is. Like nothing's new and nothing's perfect and everything's used and I don't have a crystal ball and I can't predict the future. And even though we go through every car thoroughly, there's always something that someone was hiding when they traded it in or sold it. And that's the reason they sold it. Like why did a customer sell a car? Why did a customer trade in a car? Why did they want a new car? And like, I'm a car dealer, I'm a villain, I'm a bad guy. Everybody hates used car dealers. Everybody tries to get over on us just so they can win. But if like something happens on their end when we sell them a car and it's bad, like we are just the worst kind of person. And that's why people hate car dealers. And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of shady car dealers out there. So in today's video, I'm gonna give the ending to what was a bad situation. How did I overcome this headache that's lasted a month and a half with an unhappy customer and just like an exhausted mind on my side? How, what did I do to make this a better situation? I'm gonna explain to you both sides of the stories, customers and sellers, how I took care of the customer, how they left, I think happy in today's video. My name's Craig from Flying Wheels. I hate this Jeep, but let's get going. Oh, uh, look what showed up, the crash Jeep. This Jeep right here, I bought it when it was cold out. You'll see I'm in a t-shirt and shorts and it's sunny and it's beautiful. Well, I buy things pre-season. So I bought this Jeep in the winter and I bought it right because no one's thinking Jeep Wranglers. So I actually ended up cleaning it and doing the repairs that it needed. And then we sold it to somebody that was recommended to us from a friend. So the friend gives us tons of business. He's amazing. And I appreciate it every single referral he gives us. And he's been doing it for years. So it's awesome. And I love in general, whether it's a referral or not, to have like repeat customers. So I wanna make sure everybody's satisfied. Now this Jeep, I'm just gonna say it, it was a lemon. This Jeep was a lemon. And I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know why every car is traded in or internal problems that may have been hidden when they ran through the auction or when it was sold to us or sold to somebody else and then we bought it from the wholesaler. Like people hide things and they sell their car and then it's my responsibility to figure out every problem and what was hidden and then clean it, fix it, and then sell it and hope I didn't miss any problems. And sometimes things get by us, like this Jeep, for example, has an internal engine problem that takes a hundred miles to happen. So if we fix it, so if we clear the check engine light, you can drive it for like 50, 60 miles before the check engine light comes back. And it has like the smallest misfire that you can't even tell. So like 60, 70, 80 miles later, the check engine light comes on. I don't drive every car 80 to hundred miles. I drive them from the auction back here. Sometimes I'll take them home so I get to know the vehicle. Not every car gets driven hundred miles. It gets on the lift, it gets fully inspected, it gets serviced, it gets gone through, and we do drive them 10 miles maybe, but this one boggled my mind and it really soured a good relationship and it's a real bummer. I hate this Jeep and I don't blame the customer for hating me because of this Jeep. I'm not gonna go into the entire story. I've already made a video about that story. Today's video is about how I turn a bad situation with a bad Jeep and a good customer into something I think is positive. So that's, let's get into this. So on the topic of Jeep Wranglers, we do a lot of Jeep Wranglers and I always thought that 3.6 liter Pentastar was their best engine. The 3.6 has more horsepower than their previous 3.8 liter V6. It's smoother, it gets better gas mileage. Stellantis was supposed to make a premium vehicle. Did Stellantis own Jeep at that time? I think they did. That was supposed to be their upgraded engine. They got rid of the four liter inline six, which was always their best engine to replace it with a 3.8. They replaced the 3.8 with a 3.6. This Jeep, same one as I sold the customer that has a misfire, is the same engine that's in this minivan, 3.6 liter V6, which I bought ticking and we replace the lifter. Everything's great in this thing. Now it raises the concern, are we gonna constantly be having these issues in the 3.6 liter V6s? Apparently we are. Now I wanna show you something else because we don't just buy cars at auction and then wash them and then sell them. We, we're very, very thorough. For example, we have this Wrangler right here. This is a 2012 Wrangler with 95,000 miles. Now it's 
kind of clean. It actually looks black, but I want you to be able to see closely. It's actually metallic green, which is really, really cool. And when we buy these things, they always need something. For example, this one we got at a pretty fair price for a 2012 with 95,000 miles, but I want to show you what we actually had to do to this car. So we do an inspection here, and now we actually send these cars out to another inspection station after we go through them to verify, and then we have them do the sticker because it just kind of takes away liability from us. It's an independent third party. When a customer comes and looks at our cars and says, will it pass inspection? It's not us. We're not the only ones that said yes. We have another repair shop that also said yes and then they come back and if we miss things we do those as well like this now these aren't things we miss these are all things we did to this jeep to make it ready for sale oil change with filter air filter u joint a front pads and rotors rear pads and rotors parking brake shoes parking brake hardware cat back exhaust hangers and flanges left lower ball joint we spent $3,600 on it. Now that is retail, that is not like our cost. We got cost on parts, we got cost on labor, so we do it for less than that. But if you as a consumer were to do all this work, it would be $3,600. Now if you bought this Jeep from me, and I said, oh no, it's as is, and then you find out it needs $3,600 worth of work, you get really upset with me. That's why we do it here. Like we legit replace the exhaust, cat back, we replace the springs, and if it needed it, it's done and it makes it easier to sell in the long run. Now with that in mind, the 2011s and newers come with these upgraded interiors. So the newer interior on these Jeep Wranglers. 2007 to 2010, they're slightly aged and if you buy like the Sport, the base model, they come with really cheap vinyl seats that tear easily. So here's what we do in that case. Let's see how it's going on the Jeep. How you doing? Good, are these the seat covers? No, get rid of these cheapy things. Check this out. Go past this old girl, my 73 Mach 1. These are the seat covers. Feel how much heavier these are versus the box you were just using. Holy moly. Right? So Coverado just sent us these. These are from now on our go-to seat covers. Now, now this Jeep Wrangler, I mean the foam is all broken in here, so we're gonna have to push this foam up. And no matter what, these are cheap looking seats. Like they're just ugly and they're very base model because they are. And our friends at Coverado, I couldn't make this sound more like commercial. Our friends at Coverado sent us these seat covers, which are premium, like best of the best seat covers, should change the entire look of the interior of this Wrangler. So try these out, open them up. I wanna see what they look like. I've used them in the past and loved them on trucks because they make them for all makes and models not just Jeep Wranglers. So pull these out. Let's see what they look like on this Jeep because I think they'll make a tremendous difference. What did you say, fancy smancy? <laughs> yeah, so much nicer. Wow, that is, these are like, feels like real leather. Yeah. It's not, but it feels like it. And then check out the ball. Oh my God, they're heavy. And I think they're waterproof. Yeah, see Coverado Automotive Supplies. They're water resistant. There's probably two bolsters in there, which is why it was so heavy. Yeah, oh, there's more than that. Headrest, yeah. Another headrest, armrest. Fair that looks like it slides on easy too. Yeah, it should make it a plus. Yeah, there's two of them. So the backrest should just slide right over it, right? Yeah, I believe so. Whoa. Well, that was easy and it probably tucks in through the underneath and grabs on the other side. Wow, those are nice. Those are sharp. All right, I'm gonna leave you to it. So here's the before. Seat covers are on and that is just a huge difference. And what's cool is, notice the texture in this. Let's go over to my S6, which although I hate Audis, I love this S6. Check out the seats in the S6. Ah, Rasul, everything's locked. No more locked doors, gracias. There are the seats in the Audi S6. So premium luxury seats in the S6. Now I have a similar look in a base model Jeep Wrangler, which I am pumped about. So if you're interested in these, Coverado is the name brand. You can see it right there, Coverado. It's not like cheapy seat covers. They make them for F-150s and Rams and Silverados. It's not just Jeeps. They make awesome premium quality seat covers. I'll put a link in the description if anybody's interested in it. Coverado, that's really cool product. Okay, so let's talk about the main topic of this video is the crashed Jeep. The customer wants to return the Jeep to us, right? Well, the daughter crashed into somebody. She got T-boned because she pulled out into traffic. So she was at fault. When I spoke to the mother, the mother says, oh, it was just a minor bump. It's just a couple hundred dollars worth of repairs. So I said, file a claim because it is not, there's no way based on your photos, it's a couple hundred dollars in repairs. She also made like a Facebook post that said, oh, she was in a minor fender bender and the dealer won't take it back. That's not, not true. I looked at him like, it's gotta be $6,500 worth of repair work. Just off those photos, I bet. There's so much more than just that bend in a bumper that you think in a dinged fender, like fasteners, nuts, bolts, inner fender. There's so much that gets replaced when you bring your car 
to a repair facility and don't just do it yourself. Here's the actual repair bill that we got from the insurance adjuster after we took the car back. So we took the car back from her, we got a direct order to pay, so they pay us, and then we get to do all the repairs in-house. Here's what the insurance adjuster came up with. Here's the preliminary estimate, and it includes everything, impact bar, push bar, I mean it is everything, because there are things that you don't think of when you look at it and say, oh yeah, it's just a minor impact, but the headlight assembly might be out of alignment. The right fender panels and edging and clear coat and blending and inner fender liner and flares. Anyway, it adds up to $6,875. So here's how I handled the situation. I offered to buy it back. To be honest with you, it's just easier to buy it back at the beginning because like, look at I'm $2,500 into it and all my time and a month and a half's worth of stress. Them too, I am not discounting them at all. This has just been hanging over my head. I could have had it fixed and like done everything on my end and it would have been crashed and resold. And the values are higher now because look at I'm in shorts and a t-shirt is cheap season. So here's what I did. I offered again to buy it back. They asked me if I'd buy it back. I said, not unless I either deduct the amount of repairs that it needs or you have it fixed. If you have it fixed, it's gonna take two to three months if you can find a body shop. You're gonna have to file a claim. You're gonna have to deal with all the headaches and you're still not gonna have a car. I offered to buy it back. They have to file a claim with their insurance company. We'll do the repairs. We'll have all the repairs made. We got a direct to pay to us. So the insurance will write us a check to have all the repairs made. I'll take care of it with a body shop. We'll do some of it here. They'll write me a check, the insurance company. So nothing comes out of pocket for the previous owner. They don't have to deal with the accident damage. They don't have to deal with the car. They get a check right on the spot, reimbursed for their car. So they came back, I had all the paperwork drafted. I had everything ready. I've already spoken to the insurance company. I've already verified the claim. I've already verified your deductible. And I've already gotten all the information and the contacts that I need so I can submit everything and get it done on my end. Yes, I'm not gonna be able to sell this Jeep for a while, but at least the headache is gone on their end and you know, we'll get paid to do the auto body stuff. So we'll, you know, just like a body shop, we we'll get paid, we'll get paid for the repairs instead of paying Joe's auto body up the road and then we can sell it and hopefully make our money back at that point. Here's the other option. Ironically, yesterday I was at the auction. I love replacing vehicles. So like if a customer's unhappy with one, I'd offer them to swap into a different vehicle. This is our other option. I bought this yesterday. This is a 2015 identical Jeep Wrangler. Everything's the same, automatic, same interior. The only difference is this is a vinyl top, not the premium fabric top, but the interior is the same. It's a sport, it has the same wheels, but it's a 2015 with 127,000 miles. So it's significantly more money. It's gonna be like probably three to $4,000 more money because it's three years newer and 30,000 less miles. And it's now again, we're in Jeep season. I sold out before Jeep season came and I bought it before Jeep season came. So I bought it better than I bought this one. Gave them this option, but a lot of people don't wanna upgrade because it's more money and they've already had kind of a bad experience. So they don't wanna pay more out of pocket. So I kind of had a feeling this wasn't gonna work. So, but I wanted to give them the option. They're done with Jeeps. Like now that they've read reviews, they're done with Wranglers completely. So I had this one ready. This is a 2018 Nissan. On Pathfinder, 120,000 miles. It was traded into us. I know the car very well. I knew the previous owner. It's a little big for a 16 year old girl. More like a Rogue would be a better option, but this is a full size SUV. If she liked the way the Jeep rode, this will be even better because it's the same size, but it's a better, better ride. And it's a 2018, so it's six years newer. It has 20,000 less miles. It's $15,000. I offered them even swap. So I'd give this to them for the same price they paid for the Wrangler, which is $1,000 dollars less. They would get six years newer, 30,000 less miles, and ultimately they'd get a better vehicle. I mean, Jeeps get rusty, Jeeps get abused. These are family cars. It has backup camera, it has four wheel drive, it has a third row seat if she wanted that. It has factory Bluetooth and it's just a way better car. So I had them drive it and I was very nonchalant about it, indifferent. Like if they want it, great. So I said, listen, tr try it, drive it, see if you like it. Cause you're gonna have to shop for a car anyway. So it, it shopping for a car sucks. So if you drive it and you love it, awesome. You can take it and you don't have to go car shopping. And it's good for me because I don't have to write a $14,000 check. If you hate it, no worries. I'll still write you a check and you can move on and go car shopping. But at least take it for a ride. So they wrote it, they drove it, they loved it. This, to be honest with you, would be a great, great first car. It's a lot more car than the Jeep for the same price. And there's a lot of bang for your buck in this. I'm not a giant Nissan fan in general, but this one I know and I know it's a good car. I also offered them more. So 
if you think about it, like they already had a bad experience at flying wheels. So they're less likely to want another car from flying wheels. So I kind of gave them a little bit of a guarantee. And I said, listen, if you do like this on your test drive and you decide you want it, drive it for like three days, take it to your mechanic, have it looked at, drive it around, make sure you like it. If you hate it, bring it back, like no hard feelings. I'll write you a check on the spot, but at least you don't have the car shop and you got an idea of, do you like the car? Do you don't? Not a lot of dealers are gonna give you a car for three days to see if you like it, but they've already had a bad experience. So that would kind of help them feel better about buying another car for me, which is what I'd prefer in the end. Like we want to build customer relationships. We want to build customer service. We want repeat customers. So if they had a bad experience the first time and I took care of them the second time, they're more likely to come back and recommend me, which is why they were here in the first place. They were recommended. So I don't, again, I don't have a crystal ball. I didn't know that was going to happen on the Jeep, but at least if I can take care of these issues for them, they had a second experience that was better than the first and they leave a happy customer instead of just an unsatisfied customer that had to return their car the next day. So I have two Jeeps ready for sale. I have two Jeeps in the works over there. You saw what this stock base model torn seat cover looked like. Look at it the next day. Like now that the seat has fitted into it, the backrest is perfect. This, these Coverado seats, really, really impressed with them. And I just showed this Jeep to somebody and the first thing that customer said was, I love the seat covers. So shout out to Coverado. There's a link in the description for these guys. My first time using them and I'm impressed. So they drove the Pathfinder and loved it both. I even let her drive it because she's gonna be the one driving. It's a little big, so I want her to make sure she likes it. She loved it, he loved it. But again, they don't love me, so I don't blame them for not wanting it. So they're gonna think about it over the weekend. I wrote them a check, they're on their way. The transaction's done. Like I have the car, it's over with. Hopefully they're satisfied. And like if I see them at the mall or at a restaurant, we can say hello to each other instead of them have, being sour, I hope. Like they're gonna think about it over the weekend. They're not gonna call me back. They're not gonna want it because of the history they've had here. But the option was out there for them and we'll figure it out from there. But that's how I handled a negative situation, an unhappy customer, a great referral that turned bad and turn south and emailed my buddy too and just explained what happened, which sucks. Like I shouldn't even have to email and message his wife. His, his wife shouldn't have messaged me either. Slightly inappropriate and like off-putting and obviously I'm in a, like offending, I offended I should say. Obviously I'm taking care of the, the customer, but the way the customer wrote the Facebook post made me look like such a villain. It was false, it wasn't all true. So it made me look like a villain to the people that recommended me. So that, that was a huge bummer on like, that really was off-putting to me. I was trying to do the right thing in a bad situation and it made me look terrible, but it's over with, it's done. I have this in my possession. We'll see if they buy the Pathfinder next week. They probably won't, but we can do the repairs and get paid to do the repairs. And it's been running this whole time and running fine. I'll drive it this weekend and test it out again. And worst case, if there actually is an issue, the engine's still under warranty at the mechanic so we can take it back to them. That's it for now. I just wanted to show you like the behind the scenes of owning a car dealership and how to terrible it actually can be it's exhausting sometimes like yeah it's fun because you see a camaro and a viper and a corvette and some other fun stuff but in reality it's not easy and you need to have thick skin and i don't i take everything personal and it's tough and it's emotionally exhausting so not everybody's a bad guy and what you read on facebook isn't always 100 percent like there's two sides to every story so to summarize and recap i'm going to tell you exactly what happened i ended up paying them their asking price like what they paid for it i wrote them a check back for the Jeep. I also did a pay to the order of like a direct to pay for us for the insurance claim. So they're gonna pay us to do the repairs. So I made no money on the Jeep because I gave them all their money back. Then I bought the crash Jeep back from them. So they have no more headaches. They don't have to worry about getting the Jeep fixed. It's sitting for two to three months at a repair shop because every repair shop is booked up right now. They got all their money back, everything they paid for the car. And then I'm gonna get paid to do the repairs on the Jeep. So at least we didn't make money on the Jeep sale because we returned it, but we'll make a little bit of money on the repairs because we're gonna repair in-house versus paying somebody retail. The insurance company Company's gonna pay us retail to do the repairs. Then we're gonna have a Jeep again when we resell it. So we didn't get paid the first time, but we bailed the customer out, so they're somewhat happy content, let's call it. They're out and they're gonna go buy a new car. They didn't buy the Pathfinder. They didn't wanna buy anything from us. They wanna just move on and find something else, which is fine for me as well. It's probably, honestly, probably easier. We're gonna get paid on the Jeep. We're gonna sell the Jeep. We'll get paid on it again. In our next video, we're gonna have to fix all of this. And there's a lot more headaches to it than that. We're gonna figure out why the check engine light's on. What are we gonna do for parts? How much money are we gonna make off the 
services off all the repairs because I'll tell you I saved them their deductible as well. I didn't say that before. So the direct to pay from the insurance is going to come to us. From us doing the work, I was able to save them the deductible so they didn't have to pay 500 out of pocket, which they would have to a repair shop. So they they continued to win. So I think we did a, well, a swell job on making it right for them. Who does insurance? He helped me out with the idea of the direct to pay. And then I don't have to worry about them getting a check and then paying me after they get the claim. I get the claim check and they didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. Then we're going to try to sell this thing and make some money on it as well so hopefully we make profit on it when we resell it next time which I can tell you teaser is our next video so we're gonna fix it we're gonna clean it we're gonna do all the repairs and then we're gonna sell it and hopefully make a profit maybe we did maybe we didn't you'll find out in the next video subscribe if you haven't yet and if you like enjoy watching me and my misery and the headaches and overcoming objections and being a professional problem solver make sure to subscribe but thumbs ups are always appreciated just for me it helps boost the algorithm thanks for watching everybody I'll see you later Adiós.